Um, so what I'm going to demo now is how I back up, uh, how I uh, handle an, automat an automated disaster recovery. So here is a Kubernetes cluster here on AWS, and here is another one on Azure. And they are both running with OpenShift that you probably know, and OpenShift is the Kubernetes uh, flavor of Red Hat. I'm going to just show you how I implement automatically this, uh, this strategy, and then I will come back to the ferry, but just after. So right now, what you see here is the multi-cluster dashboard, and on this multi-cluster dashboard, I have the two uh, custom instance uh, gathered, and I will be able to use that to make all my operations. So let's go. On the first, on the first, uh, on, on the first custom version, I'm going to create a, a backup export global policy daily, where I will uh, export all my backup, all my snap to uh, a bucket, Michael Italia. And I'm going to capture everything with a label. As you see, I choose a very simple label, the backup true. And that's it. Here I am, and I choose to create my policy at this point. I'm good. This policy is going to give me what we call an import detail. So the information that other policy may need to import. So I'm going to switch to my second cluster, the disaster recovery cluster, and I'm going to create an import policy. I'm using my import string to create my my profile to to just use the proper profile. And here, that's very important. I'm going to apply what we call transformation. Why do I need transformation? For two reasons. First one, I'm not using the same storage system. On AWS, I have GP2, or in my case, it's even different. I'm using a software-defined storage, which is uh, which is. Uh, Ceph, Rook, uh, RBD. And on Azure, it's managed premium. So I need to make some transformation first on that. And second things, I'm not using the same uh, URL uh, for both clusters. One cluster is using a wildcard that is ending with AWS Castanio, and the other one is using a wildcard which is ending with Azure.Castanio. So I need to handle that as well. I'm going to take the first transform where I transform the storage class to create a managed premium. And I create a new transform where I change the root. And what is interesting here is I'm using uh, regex to capture the value of the, the structure of my URL because I know that on OpenShift all my URL has built this way. And I'm going to transform that this way. So I do this operation, I create this transformation, and I create this policy uh, daily, of course. And I should be good. That's it. Now I come back to so, Michael. So, Ma and... so Michael, yeah. <laughs> you're actually doing this every day. You're, you're exporting or, or backing up the AWS cluster and you're importing into Azure. Is that, is that what this is doing? Uh, yes. It could be a, it could be a strategy when you want to implement disaster recovery, but we see that we don't necessarily need to um, to restore the application, and we don't necessarily need to scale up the workload. What we can do is we we export everything, we export the data, and we just don't start the workload. At the, at the target code. site, yeah, 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 yeah. At the target okay. site. But that's something that you can do in in case of, in case of disaster. Very impressive. Now I'm going to create two namespace, the test one with this label, of course. I'm going to create another namespace, the test two, with the same label, backup equal true. And I'm going to create a third one, test three, but this time I don't put the label for the purpose of the demonstration. I come back to custom, I run my policy, and what I see is that my backup is starting very quickly. The two namespaces are now backup. The export will start, and it's immediate. 
because there was no data inside. So we're going to make things more complicated. On the Michael II, we are going to emulate the run of the policy. And I'm going to run this policy again. And what I'm going to see is first, I'm going to import the restore point, which is global for the world, for the whole thing. But then I will trigger the restore and everything is restored. If now I go on the second cluster, I can see that I have the test one and the test two namespace recreated on the other side. Okay, so that was very, very simple. Now I'm going to put things inside the source cluster. So let's add an application like a Django application with PostgreSQL and a, a, conf, a build config, something that build my application. So now I have all these pods running on test one. Test two is still empty. And I can make a small tour to see what's inside my namespace. I have a deployment config. I don't have stateful set. I have secret and Django secret, something that has been created for my application. I have config map as well. Um, I don't have cron job, job, neighbor, daemon set, replica set, and all that stuff, but I do have service. And I do have root as well. And notice the form of the root, it's ending by AWS custom IO. And that's important that you notice that because we are going to proceed the transformation. Now I'm going to check the storage. Of course, I have a persistent volume because I run a database, but I also have a build config because I'm building dynamically my, uh, my container. Okay, that's it. I can see that my application is uh, exposing, a, uh, exposing a website, which is connected to my PostgreSQL database. And if I check that and I go directly to my uh, PostgreSQL application, I can connect to the server. And I'm going to find out that there is actually some table, especially the welcome page view, which is basically doing one thing every time that you reload your page, it's creating, it creates an entry in the database. So let's run some reload and let's see what's happening in the database. And you can see that now I have much more entry in my, in my thing. So I'm going to run again my policy. This time, the two backup will trigger, the test one and test two, but test one is going to be longer in the export phase because there is data now to pull, to push. And on the destination cluster, on the disaster recovery cluster, I'm going to run again my policy, which should run regularly, but here I don't have the time, so I need to trigger it manually. And I'm going to restore everything. So I import the restore point, that trigger the restoration process. Test two is immediately restored, but not test one. Test one takes more time. Okay, now I'm going to check things. And I can see that I get everything back in my disaster recovery. Especially look at that my root is transformed. Instead of aws.castanio, it's Azure Castanio. And if I go to the website, I can visit it. It's here. I can check the volume as well. You, you can see that it's not uh, anymore uh, my SAF RBD, it's managed premium, which is an Azure thing. And if I go to the pod, I can check that I have my data back. Okay, and I should see the previous data. Okay, and you can see that I have, those. so that's interesting in line seven, you have the previous pod, the one that was running on the source cluster. And because I reload the page on the destination cluster, I have another pod, which is creating the, which is providing the host name. I can reload just for the game and redo my request. And I can see now I have that tw uh, twice. So this is the end of this demo.
how you can quickly, easily implement a disaster recovery strategy because you are just working with label and everything, every namespace that has this label, it will be automatically exported plus restored on the destination cluster. So we have two strategies for the disaster recovery in, in custom. The first one is the rebuild. So what we do when we have a an space, we are building a restore point. I think Tom speak a lot about that. I won't discuss that. But this restore point is stored in a custom catalog. At this point, you can clone a namespace. You can uh, rest, uh, create one if you recreate one if you delete it. But if you have some issue with your storage and you lose your snapshot, you are not able to recreate. It's why we need to export. But to be 100% secure, we need to export with an encryption key in the catalog. And these keys are living in the catalog, which means that if you leave the catalog, if you lose the catalog, you lose everything. It's why we have another solution to also encrypt the catalog and that's what we call the disaster recovery operation so if you lose everything so you do that regularly with your with your policy and if you have a disaster the strategy is the following one you re you reinstall custom you reimport the catalog and you recreate the rest of point and from the rest of point that you recreated you restore your namespace that's the strategy uh michael I, I have a question please um maybe maybe i didn't pay attention before but uh, are you able to do this kind of operation for example backing up to different clouds and if you can you want to decide that for example let's imagine f f that for whatever reason aws is fully unavailable in your region but you need the workload to be in the same geographical region, do you have a way, for example, to say that you're going to switch to, for example, uh, Azure data centers in the same eastern region or do something like that? Does the product allow these kind of uh, activities, for example, do you need um, to another place or to another platform, actually? Uh, actually, the, the disaster recovery target is defined by uh, the choice of, the, of your location profile. If you decide to export to a bucket, which is uh, on a specific region, then all the data will be exported to this bucket. And that could be also an Azure blob, that could be also a GCP container, and you choose the region for that, yes. Do, do I answer your question? I think I've partially, partially. Maybe we can we can touch base after what. But I was just thinking in terms of you know, that's part of Mike Michael Kate knows that as well. He's been advocating that for years with uh, with Veeam. You know, this strategy that you want your data in three different places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, to should be a, a offsite or I forgot the whole thing. But I was thinking if there's a way that you can straight out from cast and decide that you want to push your backups to two or three different places, you know, kind of have a multi- Ah, okay, if you want to, then, to find, uh, to find exactly. out your data. So, so making ah. sure that you push your data, to, for example, to do different clouds, and then during your DR, if you say that one of the clouds is not available, that you can do the DR in another cloud, for example. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's a very stupid idea, but uh, just no, cross no, my no, mind. No, 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 that, that's a topic that we discuss at the moment. Actually, there is no, uh, you can still build two policy, that uh, define two different targets, uh, one with a specific bucket and another one with another bucket. But there is no, no there is no fan out mechanism for the moment. We are working on it at this point. So we define one location target and just one at the moment per policy. So if you want to, to, to find another target, you have to define a new policy for that. And that's not necessarily what you want to do because when you do a backup at, at time T, uh, the backup you're going to do at time T plus epsilon is not going to be the same. So you're not going to export the same thing to the different location. And so I think if, if that's your question, the answer is no. Okay. So this is an example of one of the scripts that I had to write to just automate the process that I just described of rebuilding your cluster and to uh, reinstall everything actually. So the second strategy is the strategy that I just showed during my demo is the replicate 
strategy. So I export my restore point to an external data center and I import this restore point and I restore it as well. And what I can do in the middle of the site is I can apply some transformation to say, okay, no, I don't want to uh, scale up my workload. So I want my workload to stay still, quiet, because I need to, uh, because I'm waiting for a disaster to decide to scale them up. And then I end up with such, um, such a script, which become very, very simple at this point. In my example, I just increase the number of nodes on my Kubernetes cluster. Then I work on my different namespace and um, uh, on my different uh, deployment, and then I scale them up. I also do a DNS switch. That's another strategy also, if I need to do that. That's something that we already did. And the demo automation, that was the one I just show you. So to finish on this, discussion depending on the strategy you you opt if you if you choose the strategy rebuild you'll be in the situation where you'll have a high rto and a bigger automation effort effort but the cost will be much lower it will be cheap and if you choose the last thing the complete recreation, as you were able to see, to see it, I had nearly no automation work to do, nothing to write, no script to, to produce. And I was able to bring a complete recreation strategy. But the cost is high because I have to maintain my two sites uh, in the same time. So it's a matter of what do you want to do? If you need a short RTO, or if it's fine to have a longer RTO, but you can save money. The thing is that with Kasten now you have the you really have the choice. You are not blocked technically. <laughs>